Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time again for another episode of Health Talks with Dr. Trent. The one show, maybe the only show, to show you the path to a healthier life, one conversation at a time. And today, we're talking healthy brain. That shouldn't be a surprise for anybody who's heard this show. That's one of Dr. Trin's common themes. He gives talks on brain health and food for brain health. And so we're going to give you some food for thought, right, Dr. Trin? (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, I am very happy to introduce you guys to my good friend, Dr. Edward Park, who is the founder of an organization, a company called Neural Reserve, neuroreserve.com. And they've come up with a really neat, I would call it a pill. It's really food that's kind of condensed into a capsule, really. The mind eye that we talk about, things of that sort. So welcome, Ed. Thanks, Dr. Trin. I'm glad to be here and add some food for thought. I love that intro. I love that. See how clever that was? Food for thought this morning here. All right, so tell us what the product is, and then we'll break it down. How did you come up with this, and where can we get it? Well, actually, tell us about yourself first. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I'll keep it brief. I don't know how much people want to know about me, but I'll tell a little bit. So, yeah, I guess the most important thing for people to know is that, like many people in Orange County and across the country, I have family history of neurodegenerative disease. So these are the brain diseases that come with aging, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other types of dementias. My father had dementia and Parkinson's disease for about 19 years. So he had both dementia combined with Parkinson's. And that was a really long journey for our family. And so I'm sure many people can relate given their own circumstances out there having to work through with family members. My own mother had the same sad story. So yes. Yeah, and it's becoming more and more common, and that's very unfortunate, but we're going to be talking about things we can do about it. So that's a little bit about myself personally, and from the standpoint of how it affected my whole trajectory in life, it kind of got me into healthcare from the medicines and pharmaceutical standpoint. And then eventually, after working in pharmaceuticals for about, I don't know, 15, 16 years, I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to I noticed something, and I think Dr. Trin can talk about this ad nauseum, right, for that length. And that is, I noticed that for brain health, the real way we can bend the curve for ourselves is to get involved and do things to prevent rather than to treat after diagnosis. And I realized how special brain health is, actually, and brain diseases are compared to other types of diseases, like maybe the cardiovascular ones we have or diabetes, which are tough diseases, but thankfully we have good drugs for them, lots of good drugs. And also there's great markers for them. We can test our A1Cs and things like that. But for brain health, wow, this is insidious. It happens over many, many years, decades. It crawls underneath the radar. And then all of a sudden somebody starts showing these cognitive symptoms or other symptoms. And by that time it's too late. So that's when I realized I really wanted to get into the prevention side. And for me, from pharmaceuticals and things like that, I immediately started thinking nutrition, diet, what is there to do there? And it turns out there's a lot. So it turns out when I started like really, really digging in deep on the nutrition side, there's some great research that has been coming out since 2010. It's been just building and building and building. And that really inspired kind of like the creation of a company called NeuroReserve, which I founded. And, and tell us the name of that. You were telling us a funny story of how you came. Massive research, giant focus groups. No, you sat in a Starbucks and this thing came to you here, right? Yeah, so I was thinking about, oh, I'm going to found a company, Brain Preventive Nutrition. I'm thinking, okay, all right, so this is, what are we going to do? And I'm sitting at a Starbucks one day and there's a the Starbucks Reserve beans sitting right, right in front of me. I'm sitting at one of the kind of bar stools over there at a Starbucks. And I'm looking over to my right and I'm like, Starbucks Reserve, that sounds really good. Makes me think of habitats that are preserved and like the very special kind of like wine collection you have down in a cellar or something like that. So I thought that's what we want to do with the brain. We want to really preserve it. It's a very cherished thing. So like a neuro reserve. So there's a reserve somewhere where our neurons are protected and saved and yeah. Yes, exactly. Now here's the problem now. I expect a call from a Starbucks attorney saying, okay, now give us the money that you owe us for that name. Exactly. Exactly. I work for Starbucks here. So there are. Oh, great. (laughs) I'm trapped. You're trapped. So you came up with this idea. Now, how did you turn it into a company? That's not easy. You first, you got to come up with a product and then you got to produce it. So tell us about that journey. 
Yeah, and when, when it comes to healthcare and medicine and nutrition now, more and more, right? You need a team. So the first thing I did, and I knew I couldn't do it by myself. So I started getting in touch with certain researchers who specialize in nutrition or have a huge interest in nutrition. And when it comes to dementias and Alzheimer's, and so I got in touch with some wonderful people that some at the Cleveland Clinic and over at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago and USDA out in Boston and things like that. And of course, you're meeting people like Dr. Tren along the way. I mean, shoot. So you get people together and that was around 2019. And when we decided, okay, we're going to do this thing, what are we going to make? What are we going to make? We were just sitting around the table and we started looking at the latest evidence that shows protection of the brain against these diseases and against aging cognitive decline, right? And it ends up being something called the mind diet or something very similar to the mind diet. And that's something that's kind of come to the fore over the past few years. But the mind diet is actually, is an acronym and it stands for Mediterranean-Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. It's a big, long mouthful. But what it really is, it's a modified Mediterranean diet that was developed at Rush University. And then Rush does excellent, excellent work in, in preventive nutrition for dementias. And so they had been following people for like 10 years, a thousand people for like 10 years. And they're still following them and finding out what do you eat and asking very detailed questions about their diet. And then they eventually landed at, well, we need this mind diet. And then when we realized that, and there's so much more evidence coming out supporting it, we said, you know what, we're going to design a product that helps people achieve the mind diet because you know where everybody is right now in America, they have the standard American diet, which is like here as far as nutrients. And then there's brain healthy diets, which are way up above as far as really uh, nutrient dense foods and especially ones that focus on the brain. So we said, we're going to close all those gaps or at least as many as we can with a product. And then we called it Relevate. So we ended up putting 17 nutrients into Relevate that come from the mind diet. And those are the ones that we're most likely not getting enough of, at least in North America, given our type of diet that we have. So 17 nutrients, and we call it a Relevate. And that's, I think, what you wanted to get at, Paul, and that is like how we named it. And we just right. wanted to put in the most Elevate, that is the most relevant nutrients for the brain and that uh, ended up being relevant. That so. all makes sense. Mm -hmm. To elevate the relevant nutrients that we need. All right, so let's That's break it. those down. Dr. Trin, give us some, you talk about, you give talks all the time on the healthy mind diet. Give us some breakdown, give us some samples. What are some of these nutrients? What are some of these things we're missing in our diets here? Absolutely. There's been studies showing that diet, the typical American diet, lacks the adequate vitamins, minerals that are really needed for our brain health. And as a matter of fact, the American diet contributes to poor brain health, to bad brain health, right? The inflammation and the toxins and the junk that we eat with that. And there's been additional studies showing that a lot of us have deficiencies of certain elements and vitamins that are needed for brain health. And so the goal of a product like this, and keep in mind, I'm not really a person that pushes pills, right, or more supplements. I do believe that food is medicine, and I think we all believe that. The problem is Americans don't eat the right food. And if you look at the mind diet in itself, it's 10 categories of food in the mind diet, right? And so it's not easy. It's not like steak and potatoes where you eat two ingredients and you're done with the day. The mind diet is 10 categories of food, and that can make it complex for somebody who's trying to put that together and to have the adequate nutritional nutrients for their body and their brain to function. So when you do take a pill, you hopefully fill in the gap of what is missing that your body requires. And I can guarantee you, most of us have gaps, right? We're either deficient in this or we're deficient in that. And it's because we're eating a slice of pizza for lunch or a hamburger for dinner, right? We're not getting what we need. So a product like this really fills that gap and supplements what's missing to optimize our brain. But I yeah. myself have a Twinkie every day. I figure a Twinkie has got enough chemicals in it to do something to my body here. So. <laughs> That's a great, makes for a great breakfast, right? It's got a breaded feel to it, almost like that filling in the center is almost like a butter. Yeah, it's yeah, almost exactly. like having like a bag. And I know it's artificial. There's no real food in it, so it must have lots of good stuff that they've stuffed into it here. No, uh, seriously, though. So let's talk about some of those categories, because what yeah. are we oh. missing? Give us some 
Yeah. Well, like Dr. Chen was speaking about, the Mayan diet is composed of 10 different types of food groups. Okay. Right. And like, give us some examples. What are yeah. We so the, one of them, and they're kind of specific, you know, one of them is dark leafy green vegetables. Okay. So, so dark leafy green vegetables. And as Dr. Trim was saying, these are things that we don't typically get enough of in North American diet. So dark what is a dark is leafy vegetable? I'm trying to even think yeah. of one here. Think of spinach, kale, also cruciferous vegetables fall into that category. So broccoli, right? So those are dark leafy greens and also berries. So berries is another category of food in the mind diet. And we can get to why they're important, but berries have certain nutrients in them that are quite brain healthy. And then there are some, a are, couple. Are any and, berries good? Raspberries, blackberries, blueberries? Any berries. Yeah, any berries. So berries are across all berries. One thing that they all have in common, and I'll just get into it now, is they have certain pigments on them that make them these vibrant blues and vibrant violets and pinks and things like that. Those are called anthocyanins, uh, the long word that means these pigments, the coloring to them. And those happen to be quite brain healthy. Now, so it sounds like I'm just going to get into the weeds here a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So if the berry has the skin on it, which is where the pigment is, you're going to get the benefit. But if I squeeze it and turn yeah. it into a juice, does the pigment still, does that get lost in the process here? I think some of it will get into the juice, but you're better off getting that skin. So, okay. yeah. And so many of us drink another. juices. So drink cranberry juice or blueberry or some kind of juice, but that's watered down. There's real fruit in there, but it's 10% and the rest of it's all sugar and water, I guess, or something. Yeah, that's the thing. If you have the choice between juice and no juice, I guess having the juice is nice because you do get some of those pigments and you also get some other benefits out of it, but it is might be a little higher in sugar and things like that. And you know, obviously some of the things are stripped out. All right, so like berries are good, dark leafy so, greens. I mean, leafy greens, fish, a cold water fish, that's one. And that's from the omegas. And there is, so that'd be like salmon. Water. Salmon's a cold water fish. Salmon and then some others that people don't like so much, but that they're healthy too, like sardines and anchovies. Oh, really? <laughs> so, so what's a non-cold water fish? Yeah. Oh, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something out in like that you fish for out in like the Caribbean. What's a gr grouper or is it? Or like Hawaii, you know, like, they have El Dorado, I think, or some other fish. Yeah. Because yeah, they but, don't get uh, fat on them. Basically, a cold water fish has to build up fat. And it's that some kind of that fatty enzyme or fatty tissue. Or fatty acid. Fatty acid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And those cold water fats, they don't solidify or else the fish can't even swim. It'll just be a frozen block, right? They're very fluid and they call them omega-3. And so they're very healthy for the brain. They're actually part of the structure of brain cells. They're literally part of the scaffolding that's built around them. So the membranes. So there's fish and then there's olive oil. So olive oil is huge in the mind diet. That's big. And Obviously, the Mediterranean, they put everything in all. They cook with olive oil instead of butter. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, that's four. And then we got a bunch of others like nuts and seeds and also other colorful vegetables, things like that. You um, mentioned walnuts. If you eat too much nuts, can you become nutty? Oh, please. He always has to have one bad <laughs> joke per episode yeah. here. What about yeah. walnuts? You mentioned, I never heard of walnuts before you said off the air, walnuts look like a brain and they're good for the brain. Yeah, they're good for the brain. And the reason why is because they have a lot of omega-3 also. Oh. So they're one of the plant source of omega-3. And so you eat a lot of walnut, you get a lot of those omega-3s. It's a particular type called alpha-linolenic acid, ALA. And you might see that written on a label when you buy your walnuts and stuff. Rich in ALA, and that just means omega-3 fats. I'm thinking of my own diet here, and I'm thinking, how much time do I have kale or broccoli or uh, walnuts or sardines, probably never. Yeah, I know. That's kind of the problem. And that's actually when we got together, like our medical team to start thinking about and designing a product, that was the primary reason why they jumped on board, actually. Most physicians, like Dr. Trin was saying, they don't want to push pills or supplements and things like that as a replacement for diet. We don't want to replace diet with it. But there's a practical and a nutritional tool that they can be in order to close gaps, no matter how much people are trying, because they all know from their interactions with their patients and the family members of patients who have dementia who are concerned about what can I do to take care of my brain? They say change your diet and it ends up being very, very hard, right? They make a little bit of progress, but there's still a gap to be closed. So can I ask you a hard question? I wasn't gonna ask this, but maybe I should. It's so been on go. my mind every time I hear people talk about supplements. And I always wonder whether supplements simply get passed through your system. 
not to be crude, but do we just piss it? We overload our system with vitamin C <laughs> and then we just piss it out because it can't be absorbed fast mm -hmm. enough or whatever. No, supplements, if you're deficient, they're going to be useful. If you're deficient in certain nutrients, they're absolutely going to be useful. I guess what you're asking also is do they get absorbed? Do they actually get in? Right. 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 And so you take yeah. this massive influx and, of vitamin C, how much of it gets absorbed and how much of it just gets passed out in your urine? Yeah, yeah. It depends on a few things, right? So it depends on how it's made. So there are some supplements that use forms. So believe it or not, a nutrient, let's just say vitamin E. Right. That's not just one thing, actually. That's actually many different types of molecules, actually, that you can classify as vitamin E. And the one we choose makes a big difference as far as whether or not it's going to be absorbed properly. Same thing goes with vitamin Bs, whether or not they're number one, B12, B9, B6, B2, B3, whatever. Choosing the right form is very important. So that's, that's one aspect. The other aspect is um, what, what your age. So age is another one. So as people get older, their absorption isn't as good. So they tend to... You, you might need a supplement a little bit more if they are taking a supplement. So then you look but, at all uh, these nutraceuticals. That was a wave a few years ago. Everything from Cheerios to, I don't know, everything in between now has lists. We artificially inject more B12 or B6 or something in it. And so you think, well, this isn't so bad. That Twinkie's got a bunch of B12 that they shot into it here. I wonder if, again, yeah. does that stuff really work? Is it important to find things that have been artificially supplemented or are we just wasting our time on those things yeah one thing i'd say is just be careful about well, a couple of things so there's i don't want to get unless you want to get into the weeds but we just look and say oh good this has 50 percent of my daily fda recommended dosage yeah. of vitamin c and it's something unrelated i don't know it's literally like cereal or something and they've just jam some other stuff in here, or it's a drink, or some sort of a fruit yeah. drink or whatever here. And they say, we've added all the stuff to it. And so you say, well, that's not so bad. It's got a bunch of vitamin C, a vitamin D, a vitamin something, and milk. They put some extra vitamin D supplements and everything into it. And your brain, yeah. your logical part says, good, I'm adding something I'm missing. But then part of me says, is this just a marketing trick? And it's not really being absorbed. It doesn't really, it's not what it pretends to be. Yeah. So when they like dry up, like a lot of nutrients and especially some of these vitamin A, D, E, K, those that are oil soluble and they dry them up and put them into a pill form that's dry, that may not be the best strategy because you need oil to dissolve that so that it goes into the body. Fat right? soluble. Yeah. They're called fat soluble vitamins, fat soluble nutrients. Yeah. So, so what do you guys do then? So we made sure that we separated the fat solubles from the dry, from the other components. Mm. And that way we have relevate. What we did is we have three pills you take a day. One of them is a soft gel and it's a liquid filled and it has all of those oil soluble nutrients in their native oils so that that way they're already dissolved nicely and they can be absorbed more easily. Okay. Right? Right. If you take it down dry, What's going to happen? And with like a cup of water, which a person will be tempted to do maybe in the morning if they take it, right? Yeah. It's going to pass right through. It's not going to absorb very well at all. There you go. Yeah. So that's one thing. Yeah. So, so some of these, you need the oil. You need that oily pill. You yeah. need that gel with the oil in it there. Most you need to take it with oil or you have it with a meal that's very fatty. Mm. That's another way to do it. But then again, I'm not sure you want to. When people think of a fatty meal and they have a hamburger or something with it, that's going to cancel out any benefit there. So. Yeah, right, exactly. So there's two things I want to go through today. I want to go through these specific lists of ingredients that are in neural reserves and then maybe have you teach us why those ingredients are in there or what the specific ingredient does for the brain, right? Like why is that okay. chosen? So that'd be kind of neat for most people to know and learn. Yeah. And I'll say that before you launch into it, because we have become more knowledgeable about all this. Most of the people listening have probably heard about fatty oils and omega-3s. Most of mm -hmm. us have heard about some of these vitamin supplements and more than just vitamin C, you rattle off D and K and all these other things. We're seeing this stuff on our packaging. We're reading about it. We're hearing about it. But we don't know the original foods that we should be eating to get them. If we do, we're not integrating them into our diet enough, mm -hmm. sardines and salmon and walnuts and other sorts of things. And we don't understand really how to take them or yeah. is there a great combination is the right way. Like all I do is go get a multivitamin and it says it's got everything in it, but it's a dry pill. So that probably may not be working for some of those fatty oil things, even That's though it right. says they're in there, they're in a dried format. So 
I think people mm-hmm. are ready to have a deep discussion in the weeds in detail about some of these okay. supplements. I think we've heard about them and we're curious yeah. how to take them. It will be a good conversation also because what we'll do is we'll, we can talk about where they come from, what foods they come from as well. So let's kind of frame it that way. Here. Here's what we so need. Gonna... Here's what's missing. Here's how you could take it. If you can't, then here's how you guys suggest taking it. And here's how the three different pills should be consumed. Yeah. 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 So we'll just trace through the first nutrients and we'll just kind of cover this again, but a little bit more detail are omega-3. So there are two omega-3s in our product we elevate. And one is called DHA, eicosahexaenoic acid. The other is called EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, right? So people might have heard of those acronyms before, DHA and EPA. The difference for Relevate is that we use a form of DHA and EPA that is attached to another molecule, and it's called phosphatidylcholine. Okay, so what we have in Relevate is called phosphatidylcholine DHA and phosphatidylcholine EPA. And those are specialized forms of those omegas because those tend to carry into the brain a little bit more efficiently, actually reason quite significantly more efficiently than say a standard fish oil that you might've gotten from standard fish, right? So where we get our DHA and EPA, where we source it from, is from the roe or the caviar. So it's got the caviar in it to make it oh, you know, kind of highbrow. It is reserve. Yeah. yeah, right. So it is herring roe. We actually get it from Norway, but like it's herring roe. It's the fish eggs that we get from, not the fish themselves. So, and that's where you get that phosphatidylcholine functionalized DHA and EPA. So that's the first part. We do about 200 milligrams DHA and a 58, about 58 to 60 milligrams EPA in there. And that's about the same amounts that was showed reduced risk of dementia in a wonderful study by a research group led by Ernst Schaefer. And so it's just and is wonderful this, research. Is this in a gel form? Is this liquid? Is it's this... liquid. That's right. Mm, yeah. So it's actually in that soft gel. That's part of our product. Yeah. So that's the DHA and EPA. And as mentioned before, it's important. So getting to what Dr. Trim was asking for and like, why is it important for the brain? It's important for the brain because these actually make their way into the cell walls of neurons. So neurons, obviously they're a cell, they need a wall to kind of keep them all together. And that wall has DHA and EPA built into it. We really need that, especially DHA. And that helps that wall just stay nice and fluid. It keeps it's anti-inflammatory. So it's very useful. It's very, it's essential for the brain. And, and if brain not is, a pill, where would I get this? What, I'd get this from cold water fish. The cold is, water fish. Yeah. So sardines, anchovies, mackerel, and herring, salmon herring. and herring. So those are great. So those are two of the nutrients out of 17, right? Next one is a colocalcio, the vitamin D3. So cold calcium for all. And vitamin D3, we put about 30 micrograms in, which is the equivalent to 1200 IU, which some people, if you're looking at your labels, you can kind of figure that out. But with that, the vitamin D is becoming more, there's more and more evidence coming out about vitamin D that it is very helpful for prevention of dementia. Literally one study just came out of a research group from UK and also Canada who are reviewing U.S. data. I don't know how they got, they got their hands on U.S. data, 12,000 people they were looking at. But what they did is they looked at vitamin D intake over time and they realized, well, vitamin D is very important. Now, one thing about vitamin D is that there are receptors for vitamin D. Vitamins, you know, that were any sort of molecules, they float around the body and there are receptors out there trying to grab them, right? They're attached to our cells and they want to pull them in. Turns out the brain has a lot of vitamin D receptors, actually. I didn't know. Now, so, vitamin D, I always associate with milk. That's right. So yeah, exactly. Vitamin D is usually associated with bone health, right? And people think, okay, vitamin D helps absorption and the processing of calcium in the body. So therefore, oh, wonderful. It's great for my bones and teeth and things. But vitamin D is actually might be just as much or more useful for the brain. But none of us drink milk anymore. We've all been told milk is bad. So we all drink so, fake milk. We all drink soy milk or something like that. That's right. And I mean, there might be some good reasons for that is if people are lactose intolerant and so forth, but there has been like a little bit of a, a turn away from kind of standard run of the mill milk out there. And that could be because. So is there another way to so, get vitamin D in a natural form? What else would I take to get vitamin D? It's called sunlight. Yep. Sunlight. <laughs> That's simple. Okay. Yeah. Sunlight, yeah. Getting outside and just exposing yourself to sunlight. And once again, that's another thing. It's almost like our food situation. It's we don't get enough, but we're getting less and less. It's so ironic. I've heard about people who live in Phoenix, Arizona, 
And it's like you would expect them to have plenty of vitamin D because they get out all the time. But actually, they don't. They're all indoors because it's so hot. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it's almost the reverse effect. And there are people at really high altitudes in the U.S. and the northern altitudes. And I used to live in Boston. You're always covered up in the wintertime. And in the summertime, it's very humid, so you don't get outside. And if you're older, you don't get out and you're not as active as much typically as well. So try to get out as much as you can and try and get some exposure to the sunlight. Any but other food that would give us vitamin D if we can't get out? What else? Are you Usually doing? fish, actually. Fish as well. Fish is a source of vitamin D, actually, in addition to omegas. So omegas, so vitamin D. We got two of your compounds here, two of your... Yeah, nutrients. yeah. Uh -huh. So then there's vitamin E, but there's two forms. There's two there. So vitamin E is actually eight different molecules, actually, it's not just one. But what we included is two types, and it's alpha tocopherol and gamma tocopherol. And this is based on really, really great research over at Rush University, where they looked at people's brains, the autopsies, and said, well, what's their vitamin E levels, and what was their intake, and what was the pathology that ended up happening for dementia, or not, right? And they realized, oh, people with a certain ratio of alpha to coprol and gamma to coprol tend to be healthy, have healthier brains. And so that was a two to one, a one to two, I should say, ratio of alpha to coprol and gamma to coprol. And you just casually say that's kind of morbid here. They take autopsies on dead people and they go dissect their brain and see what's in there. And this that's person right. they know had Parkinson's, this person was healthy, what's missing? And you're that's saying right. this is one of the ingredients that's missing in the diseased brain. So, yes. Yeah, they tied it all back to their intakes. And so the thing about vitamin E is what they call an antioxidant. So all the brain is really busy. It's got a lot of energy coursing through it. It uses a burn. It's like a massive engine that just keeps burning and burning and burning. So there's a lot of intermediate molecules that are unhealthy. They're called free radicals, things like that. And so what vitamin E does, it's very good at mopping those up and cleaning those up, especially on the cell membranes, like right along that edge there, just sweeping them up. So, and we always hear that it, antioxidant yeah. is an anti-cancer kind of solution. Is that true? Anything that has, I don't know what an antioxidant does. It's anti-oxygen? Well, I don't even know what an antioxidant That's right. does. Yeah, yeah. So it, what it does is they clean up what we call free radicals or reduce their production. And free radicals are like these very unstable, usually oxygen-related molecules that kind of float around the body and they can start reacting with everything indiscriminately. And that's not a good thing, actually. That could cause cell damage. And that's related to cancer as well, right? Not just Alzheimer's and dementia. Yeah, I always hear anything so. with antioxidant is anti-cancer. If it cleans up the It could be, right? Yeah, it could be. And that's why people, we have to take care of our, they call it oxidative stress is basically what that is, right? And we want to tamp that down. Yeah, All right, so. so what can I take yeah. naturally? And you have two different compounds in there, nutrients in there, but what could I take naturally if I wanted to go that route, what would be yeah, an antioxidant? Vitamin e rich, so vitamin E is rich in nuts. Yeah. So nuts and seeds. So those types of foods have, have high amounts of vitamin E. You know, Any um, nuts better than another nut? So. Almonds, walnuts? Yeah. Ashes. You just right there. You said, it, yeah, almonds. Yeah. Vitamin E. So that's, that's a great source. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is okay. peanut a nut? Mm-hmm. I've, I've heard Watch many out. people say that <laughs> peanuts are not good for you. The peanuts themselves, not just because there's allergies sometimes, but peanuts somehow, is that true? Peanuts are different than almonds or other nuts? They don't have a, the same nutritious value? Well, first you got to answer the question, is it a nut or not? Yeah. I don't know. Is it? You tell me. I don't know. A peanut? Mm, why do they call it peanut? Is it a nut? Or is it a pea? I don't know. No. It's, it's a pea. <laughs> no. It's a legume. It is? It's a bean? It's kind of like a bean. It's in the same class almost. Yeah. yeah. So a peanut is not a nut. I it's not a nut. Not even a nut. Yeah. Not False nut. advertising. I can't believe it. I... This has been going on for decades. Yeah. Centuries. Mr. Peanut's been lying to me all these years here with his we, little monocle. We have exposed the nut peanut here on your show. Wow. The nut conspiracy. Yeah. It's pretty nutty. The nutty professor. All right. Well, I didn't know that. I really yeah. didn't know that peanuts aren't nuts. I thought they're another form of just like a walnut. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then lutein and zeaxanthin. So those are called carotenoids. And once again, those are wonderful antioxidants for the cell membranes and brains for neurons. So lutein and zeaxanthin, they're also very good for your eyes. And where you find those is in leafy green vegetables, dark mm -hmm. green leafy green vegetables. Nicotinamide, that's a long way of saying it. it's a form of vitamin B3. 
Yeah, so vitamin B3 is in the form of nicotinamide we use and place into relevate because that helps with the energetics of the brain. So when it comes to, like I mentioned, the brain uses a lot of energy, tons of energy. Mm -hmm. And so the brain really needs to be able to process and build and create energy, basically. And don't a lot of doctors, particularly if you're, I don't know, weak or something, they give you a B, is it B3, B6, B12? I don't know. They give you these B shots here, these. Shots. B12 yeah. shots. Oh, B12. Yeah. Yeah. That's a specific type of deficiency called, sometimes people call it pernicious anemia. Yeah. So that's when you don't, you can't absorb vitamin B12 through your own gut. So you got to take it in through your, uh, by injection. Does nicotinamide, when you say it's used for energy, are you talking about like stimulating the mitochondria, the battery of the cell, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, well, it's kind of like at providing some fuel for it because it's a precursor to NAD. Mm -hmm. People hear about that a lot right nowadays because NAD is, is a huge kind of metabolic type of, it's a metabolic, I don't know what the right word would be, activator. It's kind of like, it's part of the whole cycle of, of energy production in the brain. So, and it's used for a few different purposes. Is so. there a little battery in your brain? You just casually say that something that energizes your brain, the little energizer bunny in your brain here? I would almost call it a turbine. There's little turbines in your brain that need the fuel to run, right? And those turbines are called mitochondria. So the brain's full of them. Okay. They need lots of turbines running. Lots of yeah, turbines running. Cells. Okay. So we need mm -hmm. some energy. We need some fish oil. We need some yeah. E. We need some vitamin D, vitamin E. What else we got? What else? Yeah, we got vitamin B12 in the form of hydroxycobalamin. So we chose that. Usually B12 comes in a synthetic form called cyanocobalamin. You'll look at if you see that on your supplement package, you might see cyanocobalamin, but we use hydroxycobalamin because we wanted to stay true to the idea of food, right? And hydroxycobalamin is the most common form of B12 actually found in food, right? Mm. So we went with that and also it has a couple of great benefits in that it can switch into any of the active forms as necessary. So it, there's a couple of different ways it can protect the brain. And the food um, associated with B12 is? B12 is actually poultry. So poultry is a good source. Yeah. Chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chicken, some organ meats as well. So, liver, but, um, liver, liver. But, yeah. So chicken is a good one, and that's part of the mind diet, by the way. So moderate. What about chicken feet? Does it have yeah. B12? Yuck! Disgusting. Oh man, I don't know. There's nothing in a know. chicken foot. Maybe just the collagen. Yeah. So it might be just kind of like a nice protein. Okay. Chicken I feet mean, are Vietnamese Twinkies. They have no purpose to them whatsoever. They have lots of purpose, and when you eat it. It's like doing a pedicure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. It's great stuff. Disgusting. <laughs> all right. That's the first well, meat I've heard of, because obviously we're going more and more on a vegan diet. My wife's on a vegan so, diet, so she would be missing yeah. any of that. We're going to turn straight to all the plants now or heavy into plants now. So we'll just kind of course through a bunch of these real quick, but the magnesium right. is really important. We have it in form magnesium bisglycinate helps resorption and that's rich in those leafy green vegetables as well, okay. right? So magnesium. And then we have catechins, which are active bioactive nutrients from green tea. So green tea, it turns out is the epidemiology tells us it reduce, it can be a risk reducer for dementia. So green tea. So we want to incorporate that green tea aspect into it and also L-theanine, which comes with green tea as well. So we kind of want to, we dosed it almost to the point where you're getting almost like maybe basically about one and a half, two cups of green tea a day is what we wanted to kind of help wow. people emulate. Is that the amount of green tea equivalent from taking the Relevate pills? That's period? right. Yep, yep. So one half to two cups a day. So and I wonder, if, to kind of get I wonder if the green tea oh. benefit is only if you brew the tea or because there's green tea ice cream that's popular in Asian oh, cultures. Yeah. I love green tea ice cream. There's it's green in tea. there. Yeah. yeah, may not be as concentrated, but it's in there too. There's oh, yeah. green tea, iced tea. You see iced tea with green tea, and the Lipton has some sort of green tea, iced tea that they give you or something here. Yeah, so it's gonna, there's going to be a little bit in there too, but not black tea. So that's the thing. So black tea is processed differently, and it doesn't have those catechins. So. Okay. Um, Wait, so and, green tea is more healthy than black tea? I don't know if I should say it's healthier. Uh, I just know from a brain health standpoint, uh, green tea has got the catechins in it, whereas the black tea doesn't. So okay. but I'm sure there are benefits for black tea too. So what about um, flavonoids? Aren't the tea don't the tea have these flavonoids? That's right. So catechins are classified actually. So flavonoids is a huge classification of these plant-based phytonutrients, right? 
Yeah. And they're healthy in many different ways and also for the brain, right? So catechins are one. And we also include a couple others, right? And one is called flavanols, mm. right? So flavanols are a subcategory of flavonoids. And flavanols are found in dark leafy green vegetables and in berries. So we're getting back to those foods from the mind diet, right? And we include three in cytorelvate, quercetin, camphorol, and maricetin. So these are some of these people may have never heard of, but these all come from these foods, right? And, and that we don't get enough of, and we want to make, basically make sure that we close the gap to the point where they're being brain healthy in their eating. Okay. And then there's anthocyanins, like we mentioned also. Remember when we spoke about anthocyanins? We have anthocyanins in relevate as well, because berries actually is an area where people definitely don't get enough of it. There's, there's low intake of berries overall. Mm -hmm. And I will so, say that's one of the things I do do. I have berries almost every day on my cereal. That is great. I go buy wow. blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, and just mix them up. And I have pretty much yeah. every day berries on top what, of my What cereal. does the anthocyanins do? What are they? Like, so they're antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, mm -hmm. and they get into the brain. So there's studies that show that it actually makes its way in, so that they're able to cross in. So they exert their effect, and they get their intact into the brain, and that's very important. And there have been so many different studies on risk of dementia and also cognitive aging done with just straight-up berries. So there's a couple of different ways in which we look at the anthocyanins, and especially over at USDA, they just specialize almost in berries and anthocyanins. They're like all over it. You know, they're running animal studies, human studies, you name it. So as Dr. You know. Trin would say, berries are very, very good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's very funny. Uh, <laughs> very funny. All right, so, so we yeah. got berries. What else are we missing out of your- last, I think the last one here is pterostilbean. So it's a pterostilbean. And you think of it as the sister to resveratrol. Okay. And people might have heard of what resveratrol is. It's like, I feel like we're, a game of, we're in Game of Thrones or something here. You're giving me all these names of kings and queens. and <laughs> I'm giving you King Terosilvin. Yeah. And you already got a sale. Somebody on Facebook just said they just ordered the Relevate starter kit. There you go. <laughs> so, okay. You got one. All right. Steve, tell us uh, how you do. Tell us if you're smarter or you grow more hair, Steve, or whatever. Yeah. All right. So yeah. what, tell us quickly then, where do you get the product and how do you consume the product? It's three pills a day? Yeah. So where you get it is uh, you just go to neuroreserve.com. So neuroreserve.com. And how do you so spell neuro? Kind of, oh, yeah, that's right. It's a good question, actually. So it's N-E-U-R-O. Okay. Reserve, R E S E R V E. So neuroreserve, all one word, dot com. And you can go there. And just, just like this morning, we just set it up really quick. And we just said, hey, anybody who's listening to this, want to get a discount, use this code. It's OC Talk Radio. Oh, wow. You got to do that one. <laughs> OC Talk That's Radio. a simple code, right? Yeah, man. I like that. So, we so should have told Steve that. <laughs> yeah. So 15% off, and it's just use the code OC Talk Radio. We got a question from the audience on Facebook Live. Is it available to Canada? Because we have Canadians watching. Yeah, we can ship there. Mm -hmm. So the answer, Alex, is they can ship to Canada. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've got me convinced. I'm going to think I'm going to yeah. try it myself here. So is it expensive? Yeah. Give me some rough idea of what I'm buying into here. Yeah, so the typical monthly price, so we usually have a subscription and people can set it up to be, the default is every 30 days because it's a 30 day supply. Uh, they could set it up to be every 33 days. They just have to email us every 35 days because some people, they just miss a day here or there, right? right. But it's $69.59 for a 30 day supply. Mm -hmm. But with 15% off, that should be, make it basically 59, I think, okay. around there. And so what if they so do with is it less of a subscription or is it? So that's the subscription price. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And like I said, they can set it up and you can kind of email us and say, I want it every 35 days or something. Because some people just. Yeah. No, I can't. I myself, I think I'm on, I should be on like a 32 day. Yeah. There are a couple of days in the month that I'm going to miss, yeah. practically speaking. So. We got another question. What is the starter cost? The starter kit or something? Yeah, so that there is, that's interesting that there, so I believe it's 189 for three months or three 30-day supplies, so three jars, and I believe it comes with an additional book, so it's kind of like a bundle, so it comes with a book called Brain Health Kitchen, and it's written by one of our medical advisors named Annie Fenn, and it's a wonderful cookbook to help you cook brain healthy as well, so we wanted to have both together, right? 
Relevate as a supplementary product and then also the book and it's 189. So we got another question saying, can we do just a trial month rather than a three month thing? Yeah. So a trial month is there's an option when you purchase, it's just like one time. So it's like one optional, like a one time purchase. And that usually I believe the typical price for that is high. So it's going to be 86 99, but after the discount, I think it's going to be 73. Yeah. yeah. And so they can just give it a shot, see how it works. If they like it, then they could switch over to the subscription automatically. That's highly discounted. Yeah, so. And usually we try and most about good 90% of people are on subscription, no matter what the day frequency is. And the reason why is because it becomes, it's meant to be a part of your overall dietary and nutritional right. regimen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the long run. Yeah. And what price would you put on brain health? Is 50, if people say 59, 89, 109, I don't know. What price do you put on your brain health? And if you can't change your diet, if you realize I can't eat and consume all this stuff, I'm just not going to do it, can't do it, won't do it, hard to do it, then you got to do something. And this might be that something that supplements what you're not doing. Yeah, exactly. And it's a nutritional tool, as mentioned, in a larger toolkit. And your brain health is priceless, right? It is absolutely priceless. So it dictates how we live, what we are thinking, our remembering, how we love, right? It's all of our relationships are built into that. And that's the ultimately that our purpose in life has to do with relationships with other people. Well, we're glad we have and, a relationship yeah. with you with Relevate. We're going to elevate the relevant nutrients in our <laughs> lives here. And that's the food for thought for today here. So what's the discount code again? Someone asked. Oh, it's OC, OC Talk, Talk Radio. Radio. All one OC. word. OC Talk Radio is the discount code. 15% oh, off. Got it. Got it. I'll type that down. OC Talk Radio. I couldn't yeah. think of a better discount code. I could not think of a better discount code. <laughs> we nailed it. We nailed, we nailed it. it. You got it right there. Not so sure about the uh, nature's preserve or whatever the company's called, but whatever here. No <laughs> neuro reserve. Yeah. That's a little out there, but OC that talk is... radio. That's I got that. That's so <laughs> that's great. Wow. Thanks so much Ed, for coming on and over yeah, a lot no. today. We'll have to bring Ed back here to do more talks. On, on I'd like to bring back the Dr. Annie, whoever you mentioned and talk about how to eat. Cause it's, this is just a supplement. If you could learn how to yeah. eat better then it would be even better. So yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we can all, and I'd love to come back. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And also just would love to wrap with you more about brain health. That'd be great. Yeah, well, it's a awesome. topic that Dr. Trin talks about all the time. Take us out, Dr. Trin, give us your final thoughts here. All right, well, as you can, you guys can see, food is medicine and Dr. Edward Park has figured out how to put this brain health diet into a capsule or several capsules, mainly to supplement what we're missing in the American diet. So I congratulate you on your work and on making a huge contribution to the world of brain health with your company. So thanks for coming on. We'll have you come back. Thanks so much. All right. Nice to see you, Paul. Nice to see you, Dr. Trin, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Yes. All right, here we go. Well, there you have it. One more reason to tune in each and every time. You never know what you're going to hear, but it's going to be healthy. And it's going to be here on OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios at the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.